Hi guys, Liz Larson here. Today I want to show you a dessert cake that will make you the star of any party. This cake is not only gorgeous, but tastes great. All my friends and family and clients say that this is the best cake they've ever tasted. So we're going to include ganache, we're going to include simple syrup, and how to make some sugared almonds. This one tastes great guys, and I think you'll learn a lot. These are some of the ingredients you're going to need for our rum and Kahlua dessert cake. We're going to need about a cup and a half of sugar, but you're going to need them separately. I'm going to use um, probably my number 23 star tip, but you can go all the way up as big as this tip, which says it's a 1M. This is more of a pastry tip. I'm going to use my handy dandy trowel. This came from the hardware store. Uh, you can also use what's called a bench knife or a table scraper for the same technique, but this is about a dollar at the hardware store. So some of the ingredients are we need some slivered almonds. These are going to go on the outside. We're going to sugar those up and an egg for that. You need some semi-sweet baking chips. Um, a better quality is uh, end up with a better result. We're going to need a large package of instant jello. And this is a pastry pride. This is the product I'm always talking about. This is a whip topping. You can also get it in an icing form. There are some other brands. Rich's is one. You can also substitute this for a stabilized um, whipping cream. I'm also going to use some heavy whipping cream for my ganache. Now it's important that you buy old-fashioned whipping cream and not ultra-pasteurized. You can also buy just heavy cream. We're going to use Kahlua, real Kahlua for this particular cake. This can also be substituted with some instant um, coffee and vanilla. You get the same flavor without the alcohol. I'm also going to use a little bit of rum. You can use some rum flavoring also. We're going to get started now on our filling. This is our rum filling. Again, we're going to use vanilla pudding and some pastry pride whip topping, which is important. If you're not using the pastry pride at this step, you need to use some whipped cream instead. So you want to put our liquid ingredients in first at our milk. So this is a large packet of vanilla pudding. It usually calls for, I think, a, a two cups or a cup and a half. We just want to use about two thirds of a cup, just enough to wet the pudding. Okay, you can see about how much that is. I also want to add some rum, and about a tablespoon works for this, or you can add more if you like it. You can also use rum flavor, works, which, which works just as well. So put that in, get it moving a little, get it blended. You can see now that it's just to the point of blending and that it's very thick, that's what we want. At this stage, we want to add our whipped cream or our pastry pride. Now, if you're using the pastry pride, um, it works great because it's a very stable filling. It won't squish out. We want to use really only about one third of a container, which equals probably two thirds to one cup. And then we're going to let that spin for a while and beat up. So you can see about the consistency that that is. That's about how we want it. We want it nice and fluffed up, solid enough that it's not going to come off your spatula, and that'll hold up in the middle of your cake. We're going to make the ganache now. Ganache is really just uh, chocolate and heavy cream. There's lots of ways to do it, but we're going to do it really simple this time. We need about a 12-ounce bag of um, higher-quality baking chips. You want a glass container because we are going to do this in the microwave. If you do not have a microwave, you can do it over a steam bath. So, and then we're going to put our heavy cream. The trick to making the ganache the consistency that you want, and our consistency, we want it to be fairly thin because we're going to pour it, is to cover your chips with cream. So you can see that they're just at the point of being covered. Then when we heat this, we're going to put it in the microwave at half power, one minute at a time. Sometimes it'll take a minute, sometimes it'll take three minutes. But you want to check it every time, every time you pull it out, every minute. You want to mix with a metal spatula. Don't use rubber. For some reason, it tends to seize your chocolate. You also want to make sure that all of your utensils, your glass bowl and your spatula, are water-free. Any water in this mixture will seize your chocolate. 
That's the reason a lot of people have chocolate problems with chocolate ganache. This has been in the microwave for one minute on half power. And you can see that it's not melted completely, but it's starting to. So we're gonna put it back in for another minute on half power. This is after two minutes in the microwave on half power. You can see that it really looks too loose. But you'll see as we incorporate the chocolate into the milk or vice versa, that it really isn't. We want a thin ganache because we want to pour it and we want it to make beautiful long stripes down the side of our cake. This takes a little time. With ganache, you can't be in too much of a hurry, especially not to heat it. You can burn your chocolate very quickly, so slower is better. And you need to take a little time to incorporate. You can see how it starts to incorporate it and see how shiny it's getting. That's what we want. We want to make sure that it has no lumps. If your chocolate has lumps, you need to heat it for just a little bit more. And don't be afraid to do 15 seconds on half power, 30 seconds on half power. It's well worth the time involved in doing it because it's so beautiful and it tastes so good. Okay, so you want your ganache to be about at this consistency where it pours right off the end of your spatula, about like that. Make sure it's beautiful and shiny. Now, uh, if you set your ganache aside and it happens to stiffen up, get a little too cool, you can go ahead and put it back in the microwave, like I said, for 15 or 20 seconds on half power. However, you want it to be at the point where it's cool to the touch, still runs off the end of your spatula before you apply it to your cake. If you put it on too early, it'll actually melt your frosting and you don't want that creates a mess. Now we're going to make the sugared almonds for the outside. Now if you're allergic to nuts, leave this step off. But if not, I really urge you to take the time to do this one. These are fabulous. Half the time, half of them get eaten before they go on the cake because they're so good. They're easy to do. You just have to watch them real carefully in the oven. So we need an egg white and about half a cup of sugar for this. And I have one package, which I think is about four ounces of um, almonds. You can see these are very thin sliced almonds. And what I want is an egg white. Just crack it and let it go right there on your almonds. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get the almonds coated in the egg white first before we add our sugar. You would think that it would take more than one egg bite, but it really doesn't. It just takes a little time to incorporate the egg white. You can see how they start are starting to get a little wet. When all of the almonds are shiny, you know that the egg whites are all over them. The egg whites are going to stick the sugar to the almonds. You want to be careful not to add a second egg white if you think it's too dry. It'll actually make your almonds a little bit too sticky. And we want to put these around the outside of our cake so we don't want them all too clumped together. Okay, at this point you can see my almonds are all a little bit shiny and so my egg white is all over and I'm just going to dump the half a cup of sugar on. Now that's where you don't want to skim, is on the sugar. Any excess sugar will just simply fall away and it won't cause you any trouble. I have lined my pan with a little bit of parchment, which makes it so much easier to get them out and so they don't stick and I don't waste any of the almonds. I'm going to just keep tossing here. Don't be afraid to use your hands until you've got sugar on all your almonds. Now this goes in the oven at about 350 degrees. You want to watch. Um, probably five minutes is about the longest you want to leave it in before checking it. When you check it, it should look just a little bit brown and then you want to turn them. Next we're going to make the simple syrup. So this is a technique you can use for all kinds of things. So take note of this one. Simple syrup is basically just sugar and water. It can be sugar and other flavorings. Like I was talking about earlier, you could use a little bit of coffee, instant coffee grounds mixed with this little bit of water and vanilla to make the same one. But for now, we're gonna make simple syrup with water. 
So you want to start with just a couple tablespoons of water. You just want to wet the syrup, uh, the sugar. You don't want a lot more water than that, maybe just a tiny touch more. I'm going to put about a teaspoon more. And then it's going to go on high. We're going to mix it just slightly and let it boil. So you can see that even that small amount of water gets all the sugar wet and that's all you need. If you can see that consistency, it's pretty thick and that's what you need for syrup. You don't need to stir this a lot. We're not going to cook it for long, really just to the point of boil. The longer you cook a simple syrup, the more stiff your syrup will be, the harder it will be. And at some point it'll get to candy stage or brown. We don't want that. We just want a syrup that is clear. You'll see that this will start to clear as it boils. That means that all of our sugar is dissolved. Okay, if you can get a good look at that, you can kind of see that the syrup has started to clear. Let it cook maybe even 30 seconds past that. And that's really enough for this project. I'm going to add my Kahlua now, a tablespoon to two tablespoons. Just let it incorporate. The alcohol really does burn off, but you can see it's a nice brown color. If you add a, too much Kahlua at this point, you're going to need to cook a little longer to stabilize your syrup. But you can see how that looks just about like syrup that comes out of a bottle. And it'll thicken slightly as you um, let it sit. This is really hot, so I want you to be careful while you're doing this. Normally you would just do it right in the oven. But I wanted you to see in good light how it's just lightly brown. So this took a little longer than five minutes, but at five minutes you want to watch it, look at it every minute because it happens really fast. You can see how it's starting to be a little crusty, but underneath it's still pretty wet. So basically you just want to get under there and turn it lightly. Get it right back in the oven and then it shouldn't take more than another two or three minutes after that. And you want it just lightly golden brown. I pulled them out of the oven about another three minutes is what it took. My oven tends to run a little cool. So if yours is hotter, make sure just keep an eye on it. But you can see how dry they are now, how they move pretty freely. And that's when you know you're done. This batch didn't turn out especially brown, but they are nice and dry. And so I know that that's exactly where I want them to be. Now you need to let these cool before you apply them to your cake. And if you're in a hurry, go ahead and stick them in the freezer or the fridge. It won't hurt anything. This is just one option I wanted to show real quick while I'm waiting for some things to be ready. Um, I've got some white chocolate candy melts in here, just a regular bag that I've snipped just the end off. You can kind of see. And this is some parchment that I've, on the back with a black pen, made a design. And this works great for the garnish on top of any dessert cake. Makes it look super fancy where actually it's super easy. We just want to use our drop technique and make loops. And you want to make uh, probably eight or ten of these because they can break, but they chill really quickly if you put them in the fridge. And it makes pretty. Um, garnish for the top and they don't have to be perfect. I want to quickly show you my process of how I actually build this torted dessert cake. So this is actually a rounded top part of the cake. We always want that to be on the bottom. And I cut this, split it, and put it in the freezer to chill up a little bit so it's a little more stable. And you can say I put wax paper in between and that helps me, you know, maneuver the cakes around. So this is my first layer, and I have my Kahlua syrup in a pour. That makes it much easier. Now, some people will actually spray this on the cake. I like it to be nice and thick. It needs to be a little bit warm. And you kind of want to evenly distribute it. And then where it's pooled, you just spread it a little bit. Now, don't worry that it's not on every piece because it's going to be on your next two layers, too. So just spread it a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put a nice thick layer of my rum filling. 
So you put your nice thick layer in the middle and then start to spread from the center out. Try not to lift too much if you can. And your last one around is going to be about like that. So I did forget to mention in the um, tools part the quick geyser. But if you guys have been watching any of my videos, just assume there's going to be a quick geyser. You can see I put a nice thin layer of icing on top. I'm going to use my offset spat just to knock that down a little bit. And then you want to knock down this outer edge and use that just for a little more of a crumb ice. We're at the stage of applying the nuts. Now, I put them in the fridge for about five minutes and they're nice and cool. So this gets a little messy. You want to clear away your ganache or any other icing. So put the tray under here, under the lip, and that helps. Just get a handful and you want to just press them to the side. Now, if you're not going to do nuts, but you still want a border around the side, you can do things like cake crumbs, cookie crumbs, you know, crumble up some Oreos or something like that and go around the side. Or you can also just leave it plain. That's very pretty too. Okay, I want you to see here that this ganache is nice and cool. It's at room temperature at least. And it's still thin enough to come off the end of my spatula. And that's really what we want. So we're going to pour it on the top, and you want to use your bowl here for some control. Pour it into the center about that much. You can see it's pretty thick. You want to take your spatula, keep your finger here for support, and start to push out from the center. This will get your ganache nice and even. It will also push it gently over the edge, and then you'll get the striping that you want. You could also stop at this point if you don't want it to go over the edge. Keep going around a couple times. Push it a little more if you want it to go over at other places and you can see how it nice to pour. You can also use the back side of your spatula like this if you wish to get a little more. Now, if you don't have the nuts, you can actually use your um, chocolate just a little bit warmer and it will pour all the way down the sides really beautifully. Okay, our decoration for this is really quite simple. We're going to use a big fat straight shell, so let it build and release. See how fat that is? Now, I'm just using a number 23 star to get that, but you can also use a great big tip like I showed you earlier. I'm using a straight shell because I want to garnish just a little bit more and I don't want my shell to interfere with that. Now if you haven't mastered a border yet, you actually could leave the border off this cake and it really would be just as pretty. We're just going to use a nice swirl for the top of this cake for lack of a better word for it. I want to mark first. We want to make six marks even on here. So maybe about an inch and a half in on both sides. If you do it directly across, that's a great way to get it even. Turn about a third. And you certainly can measure and mark if you wish. Now I'm just going to use my bag straight up and down. Guide with my two fingers here. Begin to move around, even pressure, and move upward, and release to get a point. And release to get the point.
You can make these as big or as small as you want. You can stop right there, be finished if you want. I'm going to go a little further, like I always do. So I'm going to use my ganache, and I'm going to use that technique of pulling it right off the tip of my spatula here. And I'm just going to circle around, and I'm going to let it go off the edge so it gets on that border a little bit. so you can get a little better view. So this is giving me a little bit of interest on the top of my cake, these nice round swirls. And a little bit more yummy looking on the side. Now remember, this is a dessert cake. It can be used for a man's birthday, really any birthday. But you want it to look yummy, that's the point. And you can go on with that as much as you want. You could even put white chocolate there if you wish. So I want to finish up here with my little designs. We pulled them out of the fridge. You can see there it's pretty stable. And just stick them in the top. This cake works great with crumbled cookies on the top, with split Oreos. Pirouettes are really pretty and fancy. So you can do a million things with it. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this easy but gorgeous, you have to admit, dessert cake. I love making this one. This is the kind of thing that friends, family, and clients have said, this is the best cake I ever tasted. I hope you give it a shot and send us a photo.